Hi everyone, back to the Saab 900 Turbo. So last episode I left you with the slave cylinder stuck in the car in between the clutch and the housing, the back part of the housing for the clutch. I could not get out for love nor money, it was totally wedged. Well, in the end, I broke out the saw saw, cut it straight down the middle, and then was able to pull the two halves out. That took me about 10 minutes with a fresh saw saw blade. So if anybody's in those circumstances, my advice is literally just get the break out of saw saw. They're about 50 quid, I think, from, uh, from Lidl, aren't they, these days, a saw saw. Cut straight through, no problem at all with a fresh blade on it, and save me a load of time. But we've got a new problem. Let me show you. So I ordered the clutch kit from uh, Saab Bits because I thought they'll know exactly what they're doing. Uh, I've got the new clutch here, but I always forget what these things are called. The release plate or whatever it is, is totally different. Look at the old one. Look at the new one. Now the old one, the tool goes in around these fingers all around the outside. As you can see on the new one, I wouldn't be able to get in there. So I thought, oh, they've sent me the wrong clutch up. Gave me a ring and said, nope. Uh, this clutch kit superseded the old one. You need a different tool for these later ones to hold the fingers back. So I said, well, so what on earth do you do then? He said, well, guys normally use a bit of ignition coil or some copper pipe once they've got the fingers compressed. So how do they compress the fingers? They said, well, they either take it to a press or they make their own tool up. So again, this design is causing me problems. Now, I was down Cornwall Farmers at the weekend and I saw these and I thought, hmm, I wonder if. So I bought myself these two things here because what I'm thinking is run that through the middle, use the plate across the fingers here, probably use the square plate, will that fit inside? I can always round the edges off this square plate. Run that through the middle. I mean, we can almost demo it now. I'll cut this bit off, the end. I don't need this bit here. Cut this bit off with a bit of thread so it will thread up. Put that through. And then on the other side, if I can put something across these two points here, I can use one of these on the other side with two bars either side, something strong I'll need to find, and then compress the fingers right down. But what I'll now, now I did think I'd be able to do that and then put the tool in, but now what we need to do is do that and then slide some copper piping all the way around the outside and do it that way. So fun, 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 guys. I've got this thick bar I've had hanging around for a bit, which is what I'm thinking of using here on the back. And then like I say, what we'll do is use one of these like that against the two pieces there and then wind the bolts in together to compress the fingers back. That's the game plan anyway. Now I've done something a little sketchy and I'm gonna get told off for this, but I thought, hold on, I need weight pushing the fingers down on the clutch. Um, whatever you call it. I don't know why I keep forgetting that part of the clutch. But anyway, I thought, well, I've got a lift. I've got a car on the lift. That's a lot of weight to come down. I thought I've got the old release bearing. So, as you can see, I used a big socket, the old release bearing, and a bar, and lowered the car down. And you can see the fingers are now compressed. So I can get in there and put some copper piping all the way around the outside of the fingers to try and um, keep those fingers back. That's the plan anyway. Now a lot of people mentioned using ignition coil leads instead. I have got some old ignition coil leads here that uh, I don't really need. They look like they will uh, keep those fingers back nicely and give me half a chance of getting them back out again if I leave them poking out a bit, getting them back out a bit afterwards. And my worry about the copper piping is it'll crush too much and then won't give me the clearance. Well, let's raise the car up and see what happens, I guess. Enough. Hopefully those fingers have stayed back. Obviously the tool's dropped out now. No, it's popped out one. It's popped out one. Oh no, is that the bit I've got hanging out? Yeah. Oh, they do look flat still, look. The fingers are flat. So... That one's not quite as far back as I'd like it to be versus the others. But it does look like that has got them flat. So the test is now, we've got to see if we can slide all this in together into the Saab or not. Came in today in the Capri, by the way. 
in the rain. Mike said, don't let it be in the rain, but I have actually covered up over that primer now, obviously, um, but I will get in a little bit later. But this is the fun of working on older cars, and this is why I tend to outsource it all, because I do enjoy problem solving and trying to sort the cars out and myself, but the problem with it is, is the time this is taking, I could probably tr prep two retail cars that already had all the mechanical work done, where they just need a valet and a photo shoot. I could prep two cars in this time, and you know, should be 1500 pound return something like that so that's why it doesn't that's why you see less of this going on, on the channel than maybe at the beginning but uh i do enjoy doing it i do enjoy the problem solving as much as it can pee me off sometimes and i'm quite determined to get this running myself so guys all this needs to go in all at the same time so the uh slave needs to go in with the clutch uh all in one go slid into there this is going to be a game. Those bolts holding the slave on are a pig of a job because the new uh, slave has got a bigger rubber um, sort of bellows on it, which uh, those of you who fiddle with cars and will know how much of a pain this bum is. If you have rubber bellows and you're trying to get a screw in, rubber bellows want to hold them. So I've just got those in. I've just got to nip them up. Just had a call from Moores on the um, Camry. So I dropped the Camry down so we can have its MOT done get it back for painting and get it as a giveaway car we're going to be spending quite a bit on that they recommend discs and pads all the way around and they recommend rear shock absorbers because they used to be wanting an advisory free MOT I said look doesn't need to be advisory free but it needs to be advisory free on any safety items so I think what we're only thing we're leaving is a little bit of play in a bushing I think is the only thing we're really going to be leaving on the MOT we've got to obviously cut a limit off as to where we go with it that's not a safety thing that just means that you know it's not failed the MOT it can be replaced later on if someone wants to but we are going to be doing all new discing pads all the way around and like I said we're going to be doing rear shock absorbers we're going to be doing the welding welding on the underside of it they said it's only that one bit that needs welding the rest of the car is really good so whoever ends up winning that will get a nice interesting runabout so I'll update you as soon as I get that back shaft back into place that's going to automatically align up the clutch because it's got the spline on the clutch and the spline through there. So you can hear there it's turning the clutch. I'm just wiggling it in and it's gone home quite happily actually. I just need to give it a little dap now and then put that lock back on the place on the, in the back of it. So next up we've got to reinstall the little plastic cross in the end of the bolt that went through there and reinstall the cover with the clip over the top. That just goes in down here. Make sure I don't over tighten that and break that little plastic bit. There we go. And get the cover back down there. Line up that ding with where I know it clips in. Get the blooming light on the go. Uh, clipped onto there, didn't it? So have that line up like that. Or is there something? Oh, there's a little tab there to line up anyway. And that appears to go up the top there. Like that, I think. Yes. Like They're going to reinstall that spring bar. So now all I want to do is tighten up all the pressure plate bolts and then I've got to install the new clutch pipe of nine. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you at this point will have worked out why I need to take this back out and put it in again. I've just take it all back out and put it all back in again. So comment down below if you spotted why I had to do that. <laughs> what a game. And it was a bit harder the second time round. And again, if you spotted what the problem was, You'll know why. I will tell you later on for those that didn't know. So right, next up next, next up next, next we've got to get the end off this, the, the uh, what do you call it? Is this, what's that cylinder down there? The um, oh, mental blank today. I've got to get the end off there, which looks like it's going to be a lot of fun trying to get in there and get that off. So I can put the new pipe in, which I've got up here. There's no point doing all this if we think the pipe might be dodgy. So I've got to put that in. So that's the next game. Well, unfortunately, we've got no difference in. Oh, 
catch pedal. Still to the floor. And I've had the uh, bleed nipple open. In fact, I took it off completely to see if there's any fluid and we've got no fluid going into the slave at all with our new pipe in place, rooted all the way correctly. Uh, so it's not getting from here into there, which makes me think that what we have in fact is a bad master, clutch master down here. So I've got to order one of those up. I've had a look at the instructions through the manual there. It doesn't seem like too horrible job. Get in there, remove the air ducting, which is just one bolt, and then you'll get access to the back of this, which is two bolts. Obviously, I've learned how to undo the pipe there. So that's the next step. Obviously, I've got to wait for that to come into stock now. Hopefully, that's what it is. I can't see what else it could be once that's... I mean, it could be so simple as once we go in there, I find that it's disconnected. Uh, this is why you shouldn't really just listen to the person that told you what was wrong with it. You should check it out for yourself. But anything on this car is betterment at the moment. So for the money... And obviously I didn't incur any labour costs doing this. So for the money of the clutch kit, it's a nice thing to have with the pipe, which is known to fail as well. It's a nice thing to get it all done at once. Like I say, there was fluid down there as well. So I do think that slave was having problems. So anyway, we'll see. We'll wait for that part to come in. So we've got to find some other jobs to do. Of which is we'll run down to Moors. I've got all the brake stuff in now for that Camry. Like I said, Whoever gets that camera is going to be a lucky ducky because we've got £135 here just on brakes alone. So discs and pads front and rear um, all the way around. So it's going to have all new brakes all the way around. Obviously, they're, so they're doing the welding on it as well. Uh, they've got instructions to do the cam belt. So they're going to do the cam belt, water pump, the welding, the discs and pads, new MOT, which will have a couple of advisories on it uh, because the backing plates, I can't get hold of the backing plates and they're going to be advised for being rusty but that's not the end of the world is it the backing plates so there are going to be a couple of advisors on this one to go completely advisory free is going to be nine impossible because some of the parts just are around titanium but safety like i said safety wise it's going to be top and obviously like i say it's going to have its oil and filter done and its cam belt so that'll be top as well so i've got to drop those down to moors we also have no power today they've cut the power off so what we can also do as well is oh if i had to drop a wheel down to moors because i've had yet another blow out on the old Suzuki luckily it's on the rear tires the cheaper ones uh, I hadn't changed those over to pilots yet this will be the third tire I have to do on it this winter so we're going to go for Yokohama as we're going for on the back that tire is still decent so I'll keep that on the shelf just as a spare but yeah we're going for Yoki's on the front pilots on the front uh, sorry Yoki's on the rear pilots on the front I'm interested to see because then I can swap axles over as well. I could put the Yokies on the front and pilots on the back and see what I th think. But as we're going to do some more track days in that, it's worth spending on some decent rubber. Hopefully, I can get through the rest of this winter period without doing any more tyres. The other job we can get done without any power, because the uh, car was already up in the air, is we can get all the wheels off of the VW up because the locking wheel nuts turned up. So we can get all the wheels off of this. Got one off already. Uh... What have I done with the locking wheel nut I just bought? Brand new. There it is. It's in my pocket. So the, if you ever have a problem with locking wheel nuts, by the way, the thing to do is take a close-up photograph of it. Really good photograph of it. And then if you go onto eBay, there's loads of people that do locking wheel nuts. So you just send them a photo and you get the locking wheel nut within a couple of days. No need to go to the main stealers and pay an absolute fortune. And uh, we can whip all these out now. I know there's going to be a lot of people now telling me that you shouldn't use an impact gun on a locking wheel nut, which is probably right, but I always have. Right, better get me out of the hand free to catch this wheel. There we go. Now the tyres on this are brand new all the way around. As you can see here, the same on the front as they are on the rear. Brand new tyres all around. So we're going to drop the wheels down to car care. They're going to whip the tyres off. And then they're going to, the wheels are going to go across to Lee at Barham Engines. I'll try and get him to record some of the machining process for me so you can see, see that, guys. And then, um, yeah, then, then they'll go back over. Once he's machined the edge, then they'll go back over to car care. Keep looking, we're not somewhere where I remember they are. And then uh, get the tires put back on and we can wang them on here. Once that's done, we'll whack it down to, to Malcolm and get him to do the paint. Just realise it needs a little touch up here, just in the corner there, but nothing major. 
yeah, we'll get a wacky down to make it Malcolm to the paint on the bonnet, and then we can get it MOT'd and then up for sale. Oh, look at that. It looks like we've got new discs and pads on the front here. Obviously, they've got surface rust from being sitting around on, but you can see from the look of the discs and pads, they look like they're new as well. So we've got new tyres, new discs and pads by the looks of it. So we'll look at the other side a second. Yeah, they're new as well. Yeah, new discs and pads, front and tyres. Hopefully this should fly for an MOT then. So with the Swift down, we're using the Jag. Managed to get three wheels in the back. Probably could have got four in there at squeeze, one on the back seat. So we'll get those down to the boys. Uh, Ari, the Jag, been running around, well, we've been running around for a few days actually. It's getting about 32 to the gallon average, it says on the computer. No lights on a dash. Nothing more has popped up in my use of the car. Seems to be okay for the moment, famous last words. This is, like I said before, properly quick. It's easily as quick as the uh, as the Porsche in gear. The torque is ridiculous. So for the money, I'm thinking I might just carry on smoking around in it. The man on the other side of me says, it's, uh, it's got no engine lights on the dash now. Sell it off. And uh, just use the Swift all the time. We're at Barham Engines and Lee's got a new toy. What is it, a vapour blaster? Vapour blaster. Wow. So one what's that? So we've got a one metre turntable, so you get all our big six cylinders in there. So that's so you can clean them up without taking any material off? Yeah, so mainly, the main reason, because we're doing a lot of the alley block engines and that, like the BMWs, it just brings them up. You get a lot of aluminium oxide on there. Nice. It them up like brand new, mate. Nice. So we've got the window wiper. So yeah, yeah exactly. it still uses a, a glass medium in it, but mainly high pressure water and... Look at that, he's getting everything, all the YouTube money is getting reinvested, isn't it, mate? Reinvested in the business. Right, we're down at Moors and the boys are on the uh, Camry, and we're doing, and that corner has ended up being the outer panel as well, so they're doing the whole section. But that's some beautiful work there, mate. I'm liking your, I'm liking your fat. Proper job. Look at that. And you made all them panels up then? Yeah. Yeah, not yeah. off the shelf, are they? Nope. So that whole corner needed replacing. Whole corner, yeah. Flipping heck. I'm in for some bill here, aren't I, boy? Oh, me old mate. <laughs> oh, God, look at all that on the floor. Yeah. Right, well, I've got a nice box of bits for you. I can see why you've recommended discs and pads. Yeah, they've shot me, to be honest with you, mate. And we're doing the two, I forgot, we're doing the two rear shock absorbers yeah, as well, right. aren't we? Yeah, I mean, you can't see from here, but the back side of these, both sides, really, it's really swollen with rust. Right, and okay. I'm worried that, I mean, it's, it's perfectly strong enough at the moment, but it, I don't know, it's so rusty, it's a job to say, <laughs> so, you know, how structurally sound they are, really. Well, as always, we'll do it the proper way, won't we? We'll get it all right. done proper. Right, let's get your bits. It's very telling, isn't it? That the boys would rather work on the Camry than get onto the Sanyong and do the water pump. <laughs> well, you can't see it. You know you're in Devon when you've yeah. got a dead pheasant in the, wheelie bin, yeah. in the wheelie bin from the front of the car. Gotta love it. Yeah. And we could not finish this video off without talking about the RAV4. In fact, we can't do any video without the RAV4. This is the RAV4 from my previous videos. The lady dropped it down with that fuel leak problem, took it to the Moors boys. I've just paid the bill for it, as you knew I was going to. Everyone said I shouldn't and I shouldn't do because it's been out for months and she had her independent check with Toyota and it clearly didn't have the problem when it left the um, premises. But here's the bill I've just paid on it. Another £92.40. And on that we did, we did, I replaced the near side repeater because apparently it kept popping out. So there you go, new side repeater. Uh, and we did the fuel leak on injector number one pipe. And we sorted out the intermittent ABS lamp by renewing a brake switch. So another, obviously the guys have gone light on me on the labour again there. £92, another £92. Uh, so... Oh, and we've also got a bill here for the uh, Nissan Qashqai that I sent out about three months ago. Nissan Qashqai, the guy reported the engine management light on. They uh, got a fuel pressure code. They replaced the fuel filter, and they reckon he's not had a problem with it since. It's been out for a couple of weeks now, £61.80. 
So once again, to all those people that say, oh, you dealers, you mark the cars up too much, you just wash them, stick a bucket on and stick them out of the door and then don't want to hear when he's got problems. This is what it's really like being a dealer and doing it the right way and trying to get a good reputation and look after your customers. This is what it really costs. So comment down below. Do we, this is the last time we're going to hear about the RAV4. Is this the last time it's going to feature in a video or not? Comment down below. Anyway, massive thanks for watching as always. We'll see you on the next one.